Pokemon Skydiver. You know, when I was invited to speak here, I was thrilled. Then my parents told me that they had booked a trip to Phuket on this very same weekend and that I had to decide what I wanted to do. Let me tell you, as a 10 year old, that was not an easy choice to make. Of course, you know what I chose to do because I am here. But more importantly, here's why I chose to do this. For a few years now, I've watched and I've been inspired by many TED Talks. In fact, my parents spit the bullet and decided to homeschool me after Sir Ken Robinson's TED Talk. And Logan LaPlante later solidified that idea with his hack school and talk. My parents were inspired. And it's awesome to be inspired, isn't it? Because when you're inspired, you're excited and you're motivated. And you get that buzz. You see, I chose to be here because what if what I had to say could inspire you? Or if I could be that spark that ignites the fire that is in you. Because you know what they say, it only takes a spark. So I'm homeschooled and in a nutshell, that means I get to learn how I learn best. I get to go as fast as I want or as slow as I need to. And as an athlete, it also allows me to travel so I can participate in many competitions around the world. But the main focus of my education isn't really what you would learn in school. It isn't math or science or even language arts, although they're all very important and interesting. No, it's really learning how to learn. It's about learning about myself and learning how to be respectful. It's about acknowledging different cultures and exercising empathy, gratitude, and awareness. It's about hard work and discipline. It's about being the best version of you. Respect, empathy, gratitude, awareness, hard work, and discipline. So let's talk about this. How do you become the best version of you? I've broken it down to a few basic points, but before I go on, I just wanted to say that I know what I'm saying is not new, but I believe that it's important. And I know that it's important enough to keep repeating because it's the basics. It is our foundation. We all know that we need a solid base because, well, that's self-explanatory. So rule number one, always be positive. That is one of the most important things in life. But before you misunderstand, I don't mean being cheerful all the time. I mean, that's great, but that's not my definition of being positive. I mean this, if you're not being positive, your brain makes the body reluctant to do things. You start telling yourself things like, I can't, or that's totally impossible. In my personal favorite, uh, so many things to do. Why can't I just start tomorrow? You know what I'm talking about, right? And you start making excuses not to do things. Guess what? You end up not achieving anything, but instead, you just spend energy creating those excuses. That is what negative energy means. So be positive. Now, don't get me wrong. Being positive isn't easy. Sure, it's a simple idea but it definitely is not easy. It means that 
we need to be the masters of our emotions. But let's be honest here. When you're in a bad mood, is there anything worse than someone telling you, just be positive, cheer up? It's natural to feel. We're human are feel, and we need to acknowledge our feelings. We have anger and frustration. Is laziness an emotion? Well, we have that too. Being positive means that we have to change. It means that we have to change negative energies into positive ones. Angry at someone? Feel that surge of aggression and your heart pumping. Work out. Use that to get fit. I assure you that after 10 minutes, you're going to feel great. That is positivity. And it is hard work. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. There's another side to being positive as well, but that comes under rule number two. Always have empathy. Empathy is super important. It's one stand-up quality that makes us human. So there was once my mom and I were in Shinjuku Station, which, by the way, is the world's busiest train station, when this man came running by and bumped into her so hard, it almost knocked her over. And he even turned and glared at her. My first reaction was one of anger and surprise. How could this man be so rude and inconsiderate and not even look out for others? I told my mom how angry I was. And she said that being angry wasn't going to help. In fact, she said that I should empathize for a man who most definitely, maliciously, was trying to knock her over. And so I thought, why should I empathize? I don't even know the man. But that's just it. I don't know the man. I don't know what's on his mind or how he's feeling or what he's going through. Maybe he just lost his job. Maybe he's going home to tell the family the bad news. Maybe now they can't make the rent or would have to move out with nowhere to go. Okay, maybe he was just having a bad day and took it out on my mom. But see, now empathy turned everything around. I was no longer angry. Well, I mean, I still felt sorry for my mom because she got bumped into. But I realized that I could not reduce that man's whole existence to being rude from one brief encounter. And that is empathy. And awareness, because it is an awareness that reminds us that others matter and that we should respect that. We should respect them and their experiences. Rule number three, always learn from your mistakes. Now, when you've done something wrong and you refuse to realize that, you never learn and you'll never get better. But this isn't a secret. We all know this. In fact, there are like a million quotes online about making mistakes and learning from them. Like, this, or this, and how about this? But then there's this little nugget of gold that I know we can all relate to. I never make the same mistake twice. I make them five or six times, you know, just to be sure. You know, indoor skydivers flying wind speeds that can go up to 280 kilometers per hour. And just how fast is that? That's wind speeds that can go up to as high as a Category 5 hurricane. And that's one of the coolest things about indoor skydiving. Even a kid like me can jump in and use the wind to do all sorts of awesome tricks. So it was this once when I was practicing, and my coach was telling me that, hey, you're making a mistake. And I felt that I was doing it right. So I made the same mistake over and over again 
until I hit the wall. And boy, it hurt. So the question is, why don't we learn? I could get philosophical about this, but really, it's because we just don't like to be wrong. Fact is, if we could all learn from our mistakes and not repeat them, at least not the same ones, then that would be true learning. That is humility and awareness because it means we know and accept what we have done wrong and are willing to make a change. So, did I learn from my mistake? Well, let's just say I'm still working on it. Rule number four, always try your best. Now, when you're doing something and you don't give it 100%, you're always going to feel disappointed and think that, oh, I could have done better. And you won't feel that pride in trying your best because you haven't worked your potential. I have a long way to go as an athlete, but still, at every competition, I aim to be my best. And I know that I'm not going to win yet. But my goal is to be the best that I can be that very moment in time. And I'm always proud of my effort. Rule number five, always push yourself and never give up. Challenge yourself after you've mastered a skill. Go a little further. You need to do things that you don't want to do or are afraid to try. That's how you get better. But don't give up because once you do, we'll have to do, go through all the pain just to be back to where you were before. You have to force yourself to keep at it. Just keep on keeping at it. I learned this very painful lesson when I was trying to get myself to get into the splits. Training to get into the splits is painful. But if you work at it and push yourself beyond your limits every single day, you'll see results. Trying your best, never giving up, and always pushing yourself. That's discipline, and it always requires hard work. And above all, I think that we need to be grateful for what we have. Because if you can't be grateful, then we don't see positive. We won't feel empathy. And we can't have awareness and respect. And we won't be motivated to have discipline or to work hard. I am grateful because I've been given a chance to share my thoughts with you. Because I've not been viewed only as a child who should know his place, who should just do as he's told. Instead, I feel respected and heard, and I'm grateful that I've been brought up to feel that I matter. And that motivates me to be better, to show more kindness, and in turn, I hope to pass that on to the next generation because I know how important that is. And that is me being the best version of myself. Thank you.